This is the Jagasit Podcast. I can't right now. Oh god, I'm so depressed. Yeah, like she spoke. She like spoke she was half like asleep the, all the time. Yeah, like with this drunken voice fry on the end of everything she said because she was kind of in and out of a drunken stupor all the time. And possibly on things like antidepressants. Like she probably was also doing pills as well, but it was definitely I wouldn't put alcohol. It past her. I no, wouldn't put it past because her. the thing is she was the thing is I have met many alcoholics in my life that literally held jobs, had families. They didn't even like nobody even fucking knew. Yeah. Like, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis for example came out about her pill addiction in 2000 something. I forget exactly like early like in the early 2010s i think she spoke about this yeah and like nobody really knew she was didn't do it at work she did it at home and it's like i've seen people with addictions right that although it was unhealthy for their body it wasn't so much messing with their lives yeah they were in functional. fact like they were more relaxed so they were co- more charismatic and able to thrive and i'm like they, they found a way to make it work for them which i'm not encouraging alcoholism or drug addiction obviously that's it's sad and horrible but like it's possible you can do that it's just it's a special kind of person. It's funny. You mentioned that, and, you know, I, I mentioned Radio Shack a second ago. Back when I worked at Radio Shack, oh God. one of my customers, she actually was a lawyer who was also a functional alcoholic. It was weird. One day I actually had to sell her a cell phone, and she she was so overwhelmed by all the information we had to sign her up for for this contract phone that she went out to the liquor store that happened to be next <laughs> to my Radio Shack. She bought a bottle, oh a bottle of Kahlua and came back to the store. Not a nip, not a small bottle, knew. like a full. A full bottle of Kahlua came back to the store and was just drinking the Kahlua with some through a, uh, some plastic cups that she asked the liquor store for right in the middle of the radio shack while she was signing up for this new phone that I, that I was helping her with. God, she was hilarious. Not going to lie. But that's definitely not a Not going to lie. That's a mood. I mean, like, yeah. not every day. I don't even drink all that much. But like, so yeah. There are functional alcoholics, functional addicts, and it's surprising. They And usually it's really funny. I have met a lot of them that were just very charismatic and funny and kind of flaky. The worst thing that happened to these particular people was they forgot stuff sometimes. Yeah. And they were a little moody sometimes, but yeah. that was roughly it. And I can handle moody. I can handle forgetful. I'm moody and forgetful. Like, I totally get it. But, but Miriam? like Miriam Pataki. So let's, let me give them an example real quick. The yeah. road trip. Oh, that's, that's a great the episode. Most prom- like, there are a lot of examples of Miriam's alcoholism. Yeah. But I think the most prominent message of her alcoholism was the episode where Helga and her went on a road trip to South Dakota by themselves. Yeah. Um, they stopped at a motel and a restaurant. Miriam, at this point, had already just been, like, a complete fucking mess already. But she was trying to make the most of it. And I think she was also trying to stay sober. Trying. Trying. It wasn't. Wasn't working out. Wasn't, I think while she was driving, at least, but it wasn't working out. No, it would, it, the amount of potential car accidents that they got into that, like they almost no, it wasn't died. potential. They got in a car accident. So that's what I'm saying. They no, well, yeah, they got into one, but they could have gotten into like four or five more. But yeah, they because of Helga, they avoided like three and yeah. one that could have killed them. Right. So they she put the purse on the roof of her car and then like drove off. Now here's the thing. It doesn't take an alcoholic to do that. I've seen tired moms do it. I mean, for fuck's sake, if you see a mom with a to- toddler, you would think they were drunk because sure. those poor women are just all over the fucking place because they're so tired. Right. But this wasn't the case with Miriam. Like, it's not a mom that's super busy. She wasn't on the phone doing business. She wasn't just having one of those laps of judgment moments. Because this happened so frequently, when she lost the purse, even Helga pointed out, Miriam, did you lose your purse again? Yeah. Now, we talked about how, like, she lost the purse and stuff like that. Now, talk about when Miriam's sober. Yeah, he, that's, that's what's crazy. That, there was an tell. episode. There was an episode where Big Bob, like, I think he hurt his back or something on yeah, the Yeah, his back went out. And Miriam ended up taking his place running the Beeper Emporium. She went from being a drunken mess to a sober, obsessive monster. Yeah, and I think the reason she was so monstrous about it was because she hadn't found her balance yet. See, in the idea for the TV show, The Patakis, they mentioned that they were going to have Miriam 12 stepping. Yeah. And, and as she was going to work and for she a TV was working. Station. Now, when she was running Big Bob's Beepers, she was a bitch, absolutely, because probably that could have been withdrawal symptoms. That could have been her getting used to being sober. You know, you, you know what I think it is, honestly? Well, if you look at, if first of all, if you look at Helga, Helga is an extremely obsessive personality with lots, lo- lots of inborn emotional and very creative issues with yes, no outlets for that besides yes, poetry yes now in, in also her- you can find the jug of sip podcast on youtube and spotify every monday and friday and don't forget to like share subscribe and follow at jug of sip podcast on all social media